I always know that May is coming close when the magnolia trees in my area start blooming and all of the flowers start growing and it seems like winter is finally over in Canada, which yes, is around May. That is living in the north for you. So today, I'm not going to be talking anymore about magnolia trees. Instead, we're going to be jumping into my bullet journal, which I keep in a traveler's notebook in planning the month of May together. I actually recently finished up my insert, which I keep my monthly and daily logs in. So here's a look at the new one I set up in my latest video. I'll include a card for that above, but we are just going to jump right into this notebook and start planning for May. And as usual, I'm going to be doing a ton of stamping. My obsession with stamping is not over yet. I still really, really love it. And I'll be doing a lot of that in this plan with me. For the first page, I'm doing a cover page, but it's really simple right now because all I'm doing is I'm putting the number of the month of the year at the bottom. And then I'm actually not going to touch this. Instead, I'm going to put a nice little Polaroid in the middle of my favorite picture of the month just to make this cover page really easy in low maintenance, but also really sentimental and memorable. So that's kind of that thing out of the way. Now we're moving into our next spread. I know, I'm moving so quickly here. Um, this is going to be our month at a glance or monthly calendar. I use a vertical calendar, which is pretty similar to the bullet journal method. The only thing I really modify is I like to add a bit of division so I can see what weeks are kind of within the month and I just do that by drawing a horizontal line between Sunday and Monday because I consider Monday the start of the week. I was always kind of trained to think it was Monday so when I found out that people consider Sunday the start of the week it really seriously rocked my world. I was in shock and I'm still not over that information. I just don't understand how Sunday would be the start of a week because Sunday's on the weekend but you know I can understand that if you were so seriously trained to think that Sunday was the start of the week. Like I was trained to think that Monday was the start of the week. You would probably feel the same way about me saying that Monday is the start of the week. So let me know below if you consider Sunday the start of the week. And maybe there's a reason why some places teach you Sunday versus Monday. Maybe it's like a location thing. But either way, make sure you draw your line based on when you start your own week. That is the moral of the story on that one. So as you guys can kind of tell, I'm not really sticking to a specific explanation in the voiceover. And that's mainly because I feel like these spreads are pretty similar. For example, this task list I've done a couple times in my setup. I explained this more in depth in my April setup. So go check that one out if you're curious about what this kind of list is. But I thought I would actually change up the format of this video and talk a little bit about how I'm liking using a traveler's notebook as a bullet journal. I know there are a couple people on the platform that use Traveler's Notebooks as bullet journals. A couple that come to mind are My Life in a Bullet. I love her bullet journal so much. Um, Serica Studio also used a Traveler's Notebook as a bullet journal for a while, and that was really fun. She does a lot of really cool collages, but I know it's definitely not the, I guess, traditional system in the sense that, you know, you don't have like a notebook and just kind of stick to the notebook. The Traveler's Notebook system is very different in that sense because we're bullet journaling, you're kind of contained in one notebook, you fill it up, you move on to the next one. The Traveler's Notebook, you have the ability to have multiple inserts, which really changes the way that you bullet journal. And that actually is one of the things I love most about this system for bullet journaling. I am <laughs> one of those people who hates migrating. I absolutely hate migrating yearly pages. I don't like to remake pages. I just don't find it enjoyable. I like to kind of make something once and then it's over with and done. I just find sometimes with migrating information, it can be easy to leave stuff behind and then that can kind of impact the functionality of the system. So for me, when I started my Traveler's Notebook, one of the things I was most excited about was being able to have an insert just for my yearly collections and then have a separate one for my monthly logs and daily logs and be able to switch out that insert while keeping the same yearly log insert 
of collections in my notebook the entire year. To me, that just seemed like the dream. And I can confirm after using my notebook since February, so it's been about three months. Uh, yeah, it's definitely working really, really well for me. I absolutely love having the ability to kind of keep those permanent collections at the front, not have to remake them all the time. I also love finishing inserts every three months. That's usually how long it takes me to finish a monthly daily log insert like you see now. And I love being able to kind of look through the old one and start a new one and have that fresh feeling. Before in a bullet journal, it would take me six to eight months to finish a notebook. So by the time I got to that eight month mark, I was really, really wanting a new notebook and a bit of a change. I really like change and switching things up. So this really works for me. And also being able to, within my Traveler's Notebook, change the setup and the inserts is something that I've really loved as well. In addition to my two inserts I use for bullet journaling, I recently added a third insert, which is the letter pad from the recent B-Sides and Rarities release. I think it's really cool that I'm able to, you know, adjust my system as time goes on and it's this constantly evolving thing and it's not static and that I can just add stuff when I want to and it doesn't wreck the system or cause me to have to restart in an entirely new notebook and completely change things up. So that's just something that has really worked well for me and if you are kind of thinking about using a traveler's notebook as a bullet journal and you have, you know, the ability to do that. If you're maybe finishing up your notebook, you need a new one, and you also have the financial capability to invest in one of these, I recommend it. I think it's a really cool system. It won't work for everyone, but I mean, how it works for me is amazing. I've never had a bullet journal work so well, so it's definitely a really great system for some people. While I'm doing my final flip here, I thought I'd also mention that another thing that I've been really impressed with is the durability of the cover. I really love how the Traveler's Company designed their covers to actually be able to travel and wear with you. I'm usually really stressed about my covers wearing, but this one, it just takes the scratches and the stains really easily. My dog actually sneezed on my cover and you can barely see it, so I really appreciate the uh, durability of the leather and that's able to take on the dog sneezes with grace. But yeah, that's actually a couple of my thoughts on using this travel notebook as a bullet journal. And that is the end of this video. Kind of short, kind of rambly, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you use a traveler's notebook as a bullet journal below and if you like it. And besides that, I'll see you guys in the next video, Ooh, which is actually going to be the B-Sides haul, but then after that is going to be a flip through of my insert with monthly logs, so get excited for that. Okay, that's all for me. See you guys later. <laughs>